Morning world. This is Pastor John Fisherman Cranwell from the Philippines, Quezon City, in GRV TV. This morning, guess what our topic is? Well, the last two weeks I haven't been able to finish on the title being The Importance of Reading the Bible Daily. The Importance of Reading the Bible Daily, Daily, Daily. And I don't think any amount of teaching will be enough to get the point over. It's so important. Sobre importante is what they say here in the Philippines. And so I'd like to start this morning by trying to finish the series off from the book of Proverbs. And in verse um, uh, 9 of chapter 28 of Proverbs, written by a very wise man called Solomon. And he says here, one who turns his ear from hearing the law, or the word, oh, the law means a word here, one who turns his ear from hearing the word, even his prayer is an abomination. Well, what a scripture to start with. Sorry about that. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry at all, because let's reverse that. He who doesn't turn his ear away from hearing the word of God, his prayer is not an abomination. His prayer would be a blessing, and God will answer his prayer. Now, God answers prayers in many different ways. He will say either yes, no, or wait. <laughs> That's about it. And sometimes he will answer his, the, our prayers in a different way than we could ever imagine. Lord, take me out of this situation. I can't bear it. But what will he do? Instead of taking you out of that situation, he'll give you the strength to go through that situation. Because you've been reading the Word and your faith is strengthened by reading the Word. So God will answer your prayers in not taking you out of the situation, but taking through the situation by giving you more strength to make it through there so that when you've finished and get to the other end of the situation, then you can tell others how to get on with your life through the situation. Because He'll help you get through by giving you more strength. And so the thing is this, that don't turn your ear away from hearing the Word of God. Don't turn your, your uh, eyes away from reading the Word of God. Okay, so now let's turn to another, another um, part of the Bible. Um, let's see. Right. Um, Romans. We'll go to the New Testament and have a look in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12. After Acts, we've got Acts, Romans 12. And we'll look at verse 11. Okay. And what does it say? Not lagging in diligence, fervent in the Spirit, serving the Lord. Hmm. Okay. Not lagging in diligence. We must be diligent um, in the Bible. It says that we must have faith in God. But what does it say? Let's have a look in Hebrews to make sure what it says in Hebrews 11, the faith chapter. Let's have a quick look at that, shall we? And it says, Without faith it's impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligence is with lots of energy. Um, and so we've got to be diligent and work hard at it. So here... Um, Paul is saying that not lagging in diligence, not lacking in diligence, not behind in diligence, not behind in hard work, okay? Fervent means full on, on fire for God. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Not serving ourselves, but serving Him who's coming back, Malapitna, coming back very soon. Okay? So we've not to lag in our diligence in serving the Lord. And in serving the Lord, we must read His Word, His infallible Word, the Bible, daily, 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 as we see the end drawing nearer, which it is. So let's have a look now at another uh, chapter in Romans, chapter 15, chapter 14, chapter 15, and verse 6. That you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. How can we glorify God if we're not reading His Word? If we're not diligent in reading His Word? How can we glorify God? How can we lift up His name? 
How can we tell others about Jesus if we don't know about him? How can we tell others how to do this and how to do that and conserving God and doing God's will if we don't know the word? So we must know the word. So we must eat the word, drink the word, and soak it in like a sponge so that we have it in our heart and in our mind. And when we call to give um, an account, we can then share the word of God with others to give them their freedom from their sin and their freedom from their religion so that they too can come to Christ and have the assurance of salvation and eternal life in heaven. And that's all through word, reading the word. It's for our encouragement and for others' encouragement. We must encourage others, the Bible says, as we see the day drawing nearer. And it is drawing nearer. Is that right, Chris? Yeah. Is the day drawing nearer? Yes. How long have we got to go? The Bible doesn't say how long, but it says always be ready because he's going to come like a thief in the night. Yeah, anytime. Anytime now. So if we're not ready, what happens? Every day, every, day, every minute, every yeah. second, you get so, ready. So what happens if we're, if we're not reading the word? What happens when he comes and we're not ready? You will go to the fire. We get left behind. <laughs> I know, oh, as I say in the Philippines. Oh no, don't get left behind. Make sure you're reading the word so your faith is strong strong faith because we must endure as Christ said endure to the end through reading his word we need to be encouraged daily look I've been walking with the Lord for almost 50 years come the 28th of this month July I've been walking with the Lord for 50 years I've been reading the Bible every day since I bought my first Bible just um, two days after I got born again because it was Saturday night I got born again in those days 50 years ago there's the shops weren't open on Sundays and it was at a youth night. So Monday, in my lunch hour from work, I bought my first Bible. I haven't stopped reading it since. So I cannot explain the importance of daily reading a Bible. If you don't read the Bible, how can you expect to get to heaven? Because the Bible is our book of direction of God's love to us. So the Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions for leaving earth. So how can we understand the instructions if we don't read it? That's logical, isn't it? So read the Bible daily, daily, daily. Okay. Okay, let's have a look at a, another uh, scripture here. Um, let's see now. 2 Timothy 3.16. And I think this covers something that people uh, have asked many, many times. Let's have a look. You see, many unbelievers will say, why the Bible? How do you know that's the truth? It's written by men. And men are sinners. Yes, but God called certain people to write the Bible under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You see, all, all the prophets who God called to be a prophet wrote their books. The Old Testament prophets, and he received in the New Testament the apostles. So he anointed them to write the Bible. I've had experiences myself in writing stories and watching my hand writing like this about the beautiful story of heaven. I've written many stories about heaven and just watching my hand moving and tears running down my face under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The first time that happened to me, I remember as a young Christian, I'm at work, the boss comes in in the morning tea room. He said, John, what are you reading that book for? You know, that book? It's only the Bible. And he says, what are you reading that book for? Amongst all the noise and the smoke in the morning tea room. Well, boss, I just turn off. He said, you can't. I'll prove it to you one day. So a couple of minutes later, he came back to OK, John, come into my office. Sit there. Put your book down. And a piece of, piece of paper and a pen. Write what you've just been reading. Now, I'm only a young Christian. Maybe a year. I've been walking with the Lord. And so I think, gosh, how can I do this? And so I said a prayer to the Lord. It was a quick prayer in my mind. Help, Lord. And so I put my pen to the paper and believe it or not, my hand just moved like that, right down almost to the full age. And the boss said, okay, okay, you finished, you, you proved your point. And now I don't know who was more surprised, him or me. Because then I understood how the Bible was written under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? 
And so I've written many times stories about heaven that I had no idea how beautiful it was, how holy and how awesome it was, how peaceful it was, and how uh, just incredible stories. And just writing like that, watching my hand moving and tears running down my face. And when I went to speak it out to people, I could hardly speak it. It was so holy and so beautiful. Tears would run down my, my face and I'd be lost in words. Unspeakable joy, I put that in Timothy also. So what we're saying is for that the Bible was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Because it says so here uh, in this uh, chapter of the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Think of John 3.16. Then think of 1 Timothy 3.16. It's easy to remember. It says here, all scripture, not part of it, not some of it, not most of it, or whatever. All scripture, lahat in the language here, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay, why? So that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, so all scripture, the whole Bible, the Old Testament written by the Old Prophets, the New Testament written by the Apostles. And so we, when we read the Bible, we know we're getting the truth. Because the Holy Spirit, like God and Jesus, cannot lie. The Bible says, for it is impossible for God to lie. So then we must believe in the truth of His Word. And He's the only Word. And it's like He gave Jesus as the only Saviour. Okay? John 14, 6. Uh, it's a scripture that a lot of people know. But if you don't know it, it, it says this. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. God chose Jesus. He didn't choose any religious leader. And there's over 4,200 plus different religions in the world. God made none of them. And so he didn't give this job of being a savior or the key to salvation to a man, to a human being. He gave it to his son Jesus who came down and became a man and died on the cross, took your place and mine, that we should go there and we should pay for our own sins. But he paid the penalty for your sin and mine. Through his precious, um, spilled, perfect blood. It's through the blood of Jesus. That is the key. That is our salvation. Because without the shedding of blood, the Bible says, there's no forgiveness of sins. And if you go back to the Bible, right in the very first, first book, Genesis, you'll find that Adam and Eve sinned, and then they covered themselves with fig leaves, which was a, a symbol of their self-righteousness. Okay, so God saw that, so he killed some animals, okay, and gave Adam and Eve their skins as his righteousness. You see, to kill an animal, you have to shed blood. To skin it, you have to shed blood. And so there was the first shedding of blood as the forgiveness of sins in the Bible. In just the first few chapters of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. So God there set a precedence. That's the shedding of blood for the forgiveness of sins. So Christ became our Saviour and Lord by shedding His perfect blood for you and I. Okay, so now you know that you can go to heaven through Jesus, through Christ Himself, through the shed, His shed blood. You can't get to heaven through anybody else. There's nobody else that is perfect. He was only perfect sacrifice, and He shed His perfect blood for you and I. He paid the penalty. It's kind of like if you imagine you're a naughty boy or girl, you you steal somebody's car, you drive it off. You're young, you haven't got a license. You've stolen the car and you're driving recklessly at high speeds down the highway, knocking people off lest you are born again. You shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So, oops, oops, oops. But you do not have his word living in you. It's a must. In the Philippines it's called a kailanya. You must have God's word abiding in you. How do you do that? You can read it once. Is it abiding in you? No. You've got to read it all the time. Read, read, read. But when you first become born again, you just read one chapter a day for three months. And after that, you read two chapters for the next nine months. And you start off easy. It's easy to read one chapter. It only takes three or four minutes. You put that time away. The Bible says, seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Give Him time. If you don't think you've got time, He'll make sure you do. As long as you put Him first. 
and he's got to follow with the promise. Okay? So you need to have God's word, his infallible word, living and dwelling inside you. It's got to be part of you. You're, it's got to be a daily part of you. And uh, you can set a time to read your Bible that's convenient. It doesn't matter what time it is because everybody's time is different. And here the Philippines is very busy here. They have to go a long way to work and get back and they work longer hours than what we do in the Western world. And they're very busy people. But they, the Christians, the born again, they always make time to read the Word. But some don't. So this is why I'm teaching here the importance of reading the Bible daily, daily, daily. Okay, so we must have God's word living and dwelling in us. And that's how we have it living and dwelling in us. And learn it. Learn the scriptures verbatim. You know, I was reading the other day online, I was watching this video, and this pastor said that he spoke to these Chinese people uh, from mainland China. And they travelled uh, 13 hours in a train to get to the meeting and sat on a wooden floor with no aircon, no fans. And uh, when you preach to Chinese, he said, it's not just for a couple of hours, it's all day. From 7 a.m. in the morning right through to 7 p.m. at night. It's all day. They just want to learn more and more. And so at the end of his preaching, they said to him, will you pray for us? What do you want me to pray for? Well, we want to be like you. We want to have the freedom to read the Bible, tell people about Jesus, and go to church without being persecuted. Because there's heavy persecution in, in mainland China. And the pastor said, no, I can't do that. And they said, why do I? Why? Why can't you pray for us for this? He said, because we um, want to be like you. You have come 13 hours on a train. If in my country, he said, if you've got an hour to go to, to church, you won't get, you don't want to get there. It's too long time. And then you come to church and it's not a padded seat. You don't want to come in there. Um, and you sit on a wooden floor, and then there's no aircon. If the person comes to a church with no aircon, they're not interested in coming. So we want to be like you. Because you see, what they do, um, they learn scripture. And when he, he turned to the Bible for, let's read this chapter, and, and he gave them 15 Bibles. And they, there's 30 of them, so he gave the last one to this woman, she gave it to somebody else. And he said, why did you do that for you? She said, because I noticed you quoted that verse. She said, yes, I've learned many, many chapters in the Bible. Wow, he said, how did you do that? In prison. Yes, in prison for our faith. And we would get a piece of paper and write scriptures on it and pass it around. But what if you got caught? They take it away. Yes. So that's what we had to remember it real quick for. <laughs> so he said, I can't pray that prayer for you. We want to be like you. Okay, so now I come towards the end of our, our, our teaching here about reading the Bible daily, the importance of it, and say to you, if you're not born again, you need to be born again to go to heaven. God doesn't want you to go to hell. So the right time is now. You see, in the scriptures, in 2 Corinthians uh, 6.2, it says, now is the day of salvation, now is the acceptable time. Now also, in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, test yourself, examine yourself, or do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you? If not, you fail the test. So you, if Christ is not in you, you are disqualified from heaven. In Pirano, hell is yours for eternity. And as I said before, eternity is a long time to be wrong. So how, how do you come to Christ? How do you repent from your sins? How do you convert your religion? By a prayer. Romans 10, 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised the dead, you shall be saved. So let us pray. Let's confess with your mouth. In a prayer, you want to be saved? You want to go to heaven? Then you pray this prayer. If you want to go to hell, don't pray. So if you want to go to hell, just keep doing what you're doing. You'll get there without even trying. It's very easy. So if you want to make sure you go to heaven, it must be through Jesus Christ and through praying and confessing Him as your Lord and Savior. Please pray with me. Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm sorry for sinning against you, a holy God. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me and saving me. Lord, I repent for my sins right now, and I willingly turn away from my idolatrous religion to follow only you for the rest of my life. This I promise you. Lord, please make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
If you prayed that prayer, then you are saved from hell. Your sins are forgiven. You are now born again. The religion you once belonged to, if you are a Roman Catholic, you are an ex-Roman Catholic. You are now born again. You are a child of God and no longer a child of the devil. Because Jesus said, anybody who doesn't believe in me is, is the devil's son. Your father is the devil. So my father was the devil for 33 years. Okay? Now, the thing is this. Is now you prayed that prayer, you made a promise to God. You keep the promise to God, he'll keep his promise to you. If you don't, he doesn't have to keep his promise anyway. So you see, now you have promised to follow the Lord Jesus for the rest of your life. How do you do that? By well, stop doing the things you did before that please the devil with God's help. So if you smoke, don't smoke anymore. If you did dope, don't do dope anymore. God will help you to stop that. If you're a drunk, uh, and you've been drinking all the time, getting stoned and drunk and that, stop doing all that. Um, if you've been lying, you've been telling dirty jokes and swearing and blaspheming, stop doing that with God's help. He's forgiven you of all those sins. You're a new person in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Okay? And then it tells you that God gives you the ministry of reconciliation, the word of reconciliation, therefore you're his ambassador. So now you're a representative of, of God, of Jesus Christ, you are, he's given you the word to bring people to him. He's given you the ministry to bring people to him. So straight away, you can tell others about Jesus. We mustn't let our loved ones go to hell. And tell everybody you can before he comes quickly. He's coming sooner than what we all expected. As the times have changed, you see how this world has changed in the last four years. It's got radical. It's got more corrupt than it's ever been. And most people believe the lie. We've got to point them to the truth. So we point them to Jesus, away from the corrupt governments, away from the corrupt religions and philosophies and the ways of man, and teach them the ways of God, the God of the Bible, okay? Because they've all got their own gods. So point them to Jesus. Read your Bible. Start with one chapter a day for three months, studying the Gospel of John and the New Testament. And then after three months of reading one chapter, read two chapters, one in the Old Testament, one in the New, to give you a balanced spiritual diet. Okay? Because this is the Word of God. You must read this to have faith and continue having faith in the God of the Bible. Because if you don't read this every day, you will lose your faith and you won't get to heaven. Okay? So you've got to make sure. Sure can bar, they say here. Sure, no, sure, no, sure. You've got to make sure that you read this Word of God every day. Starting off with one chapter to two chapters, and then after one year, read as many as you like. If you, after one year, if you read four chapters a day in different parts of the Bible, bookmark them, you read the Old Testament once and New Testament twice. Okay? Um, so read your Bible daily. And then talk to God the Bible way. How do you do that? Well, you certainly don't do this, the upside down cross. That's a, a design uh, uh, made by Satan to confuse people, to, to mock people and insult God's cross, holy cross of Jesus. It's an insult. So don't do this anymore, it's upside down cross. Do this, lift up your holy hands, the Bible says. And, and then point people to Jesus. It's the most loving thing you can do. We mustn't allow our loved ones, our family and our loved ones, the people we care for, to go to hell. We must tell them the good news. Because if we don't, what kind of Christian are we? What kind of follower of Christ are we if we don't tell others about the good news? I ask you, what kind of Christian are you? You must tell others about Jesus, especially if he's coming so soon. And then go to a born-again church and grow in the things of God. Because we've all grown in the things of religion. We followed our parents. Like my parents, I followed their religion. But when I got born again, I pointed them to Jesus. They converted from their religion. They, they confessed their sins to God. And they're both in heaven. My dad and mum are in heaven. So please tell others about Jesus. So this is Pastor John from the Philippines, signing off now and saying, God bless you real good. Be a blessing. May God bless every step and breath you take and make and that you'll be a blessing wherever you go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.